Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a senior society. I'm asking today, I'm talking about the decay in Nigeria. Comfort is talking about integrity and who really cares. Elijah is talking about marketing your candidate through internet and attention to details. Today, expect a mix of seriousness, laughter and jabs. And we are here to please after this break. Welcome again. The decay in Nigerian system, our collective responsibilities. Nigerians over the years have suffered numerous abuses of identity, and the government moves and actions do not indicate any hope of things getting better anytime soon. The gross effect of this is evident in the recent line of actions of our citizenry, involved in massive migration, which is known in the street palace as Jakwa, literally translating to seeking alternative land of greener pasture. But then, and interestingly, Nigerians are contributing greatly to the growth and development of the world economy as seen in venture capital investment in Africa. A statistics from Patek shows an investment of 5.2 billion US dollars from 681 equity rands, up 264% from 2020 figure of 1.4 billion US dollars in Africa. The firm said the number of deals is recorded among almost doubled, increasingly 92% year over year from 355 deals in 2020. The year 2020 and 2021 reports said Nigeria retained the four spots ahead of South Africa, Egypt, Kenya, Senegal, among other countries, with 63% approximately received by fintech. 7% by logistics, 6% edutech, 5% e and social commerce, and 5% enterprise among others as at 2021. It is crystal clear that the heavy investment tailored to Nigeria display a clear potential of great nation, and it is expected to be our collective responsibility to fix the issue affecting the country. Nevertheless, what we basically lack is a system and people at the hands of affairs lack the requisite knowledge and the willpower. Collectively, we need to start answering to reality by calling a spade a spade and remove the bad ones systematically. This is a process that requires sacrifice and we must be ready to pay the price. Come for what do you see? No, me, my problem with all these um, statistics is that um, somebody somewhere or some company or group or whoever sit down somewhere, draw out statistics, tell us, oh, you know, people are rushing in droves to Nigeria. Another one on the other side says, no, they are not. And we're even at the bottom of the, um, of the food yeah, chain. Mate, we don't, okay. Yes. I, I, so I think that also contributes to this, our irresponsibility, if, we, if I can put it like that. What we need here, you've said it, is systems. We don't need people to tell us anything. We need to tell ourselves something. We need to look inwards and decide, look, what do we want to do? How do we want to do it? Are we ready to do it? You spoke about Japan, and it is clear, let us be honest, the people who are Japan have contributed also to the malaise that the country has faced. And now that they have contributed to it, I'm not saying it is wrong to Japan, I'm not saying that everybody is doing it, but I'm saying, what I'm saying is that as a Nigerian, there's a time that me and you, even sitting here, have contributed to the problem. And the only way that we can get out of this too is for the same us to contribute to, how, to the system. Yes, to the system. Okay. Honestly, and, and we are going to talk about it going forward. I think, you know, two of our topics are going to go on, on issues that go back to your topic. So there's actually synergy in what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, so I, I th for me, I'm just tired of the statistics, and I think it is time that... No, no, seriously, I, I, I don't want to hear anything about 62% again and 72%. And, uh, Nigeria is first among equals, last among equals. I, I'm tired of it. We need to work. Okay. To work. Elijah, what do you say to that? <laughs> well, let me commend her annoyance anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we actually need that level of annoyance okay. in our consciousness as Nigerians. Statistics is, has been something that I think some people in government have been using to either tell them save lies. Mm -hmm. To like, you know, if you watch, most times when you, when you hear Vice President quoting uh, statistics, it will start with what Bank said. I ask, why can't Nigeria have their own bureau of statistics? And then sometimes too, we are seeing the challenges are safe. And then some other persons in the chamber of power will come and quote their own statistics to favor 
their inactions, to support their inactions. Statistics or no statistics? He who wears the shoe knows no, where the okay. pain is. So we just, know what just, the just like what you, you both like said, said, exactly. The statistics system, will take care of itself. A system is necessary, but we should not, uh, at the same time, leave aside statistics because it is evident in fintech. We can see the likes of uh, uh, Pestac. We can see what they have been doing. We can see the likes of Team Apps. We can see the likes of Flutter Waves, how they have simplified payment and the law of jobs has been created. You know, aside that, you know, statistic also is, is a wake up call for us to know that if you bring a system, if you go back to uh, years back in banking system, you have to queue. That sometimes you have to make calls. You cannot withdraw money unless it is the branch where you open your account. But systematically, it improved. But right now, you don't even need to get to the bank to get basic financial services. So, Hussein, I may be confused. What okay. are we talking about now? Why are we talking about the influx of businesses that Nigerians have undertaken that are able to simplify our lives? Are we talking about a, a, a system failure in our country that is making our country difficult for us to live, that people are living? Okay, because fine. these are two different so, issues. So, fine. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to say is, mm -hmm. I'm taking finance mm -hmm. as, as, as one of the yastic to discuss. Okay. Uh, the fintech has actually helped us to digitalize bring a system into the financial ecosystem. Mm -hmm. If we can replicate that, the same thing in Edu, like we have ASU Strike ongoing now. Yeah. If you have Edu Tech that is in flux, people come in, it will digitalize that power of the ASU Strike or people learning one or two things. And if you build a system around the government entirely, transport system, management, health system, and what have you, so when you have a system, it helps to checkmate the abnormalities. It helps to know who is working, who is not working. And so the systems here, of course, would now be private hands coming into it. Because if you, Possibly, yeah, yeah, because if you go to, uh, yeah, 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 it's public private partnership or government subsidizing and making it easier for people, you know, to, for example, your transport system you're talking about, you know, to move around. When you go into when you said uh, edutech and you were talking about us, I'm thinking, <laughs> hey, hey, that was about the, yeah, you the monster, <laughs> the demons in that closet. <laughs> we have not uncovered it yet. <laughs> so I'm honestly, no, I'm thinking, and I thought the major issue of even the assets, like, actually, is, uh, is a systematic thing. Yeah. It's actually an issue of a system. Somebody exactly. is trying to bring you one system to to checkmate something. Another group is saying, no, 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 we are, we, are, we are not either going to participate in it or all that. Another one is saying, no, we are the ones that, you know, own the, the... So even there, there has to be a clarity as to who is driving education, for example, who has the power in that sector, and therefore who is going to balance it out. Yes, just think, uh, to add to okay. what you said. You know, I said political willpower. Yeah. So when you see in civil servants, there are a lot of people jeopardizing efforts to create that system. Seems there are a lot of approach, a lot of uh, um, kind of proposals that have been sent forward. But civil servant, public servant are jeopardizing that effort because of political willpower, right? So when you are saying who is to handle it, I think it's the government. If the government is ready, the government will make it happen. Mm. With the government. Okay. I think we all need to focus on our fundamentals. Fundamentals are the realistic things on ground. Definitely, when the fundamentals are sorted out, the technicals, which is uh, the statistics, will take care of itself. Ah, That's ah, just the truth. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. <laughs> Elijah will be talking about marketing your candidacy after the break.